Zach Hughes, Jamar Perkins. It's crunch time. It's crunch time here live in the studios of Austin P. Zach Pugh joined as always by Jamar Perkins and Reese Britt. Reese, welcome back. We're happy to have you here. Yeah, appreciate it. Gentlemen, as always, we like to get into how was your weekend. I'm going to start with you, Jamar. Jamar, how was your weekend? I had a pretty good weekend. It was fun. Got to relax once again. Was off on Sunday. Got to watch some college football. Or excuse me. Yeah, I was about NFL to say, wrong, wrong, wrong one. Saturday, didn't get to watch college football. Well, oh, you know what? It was unfortunate. I, it was fortunate I got to miss the Austin PL, but... We'll talk about that later, but I do want to introduce our special guest with this. We got Reese Britt here. <laughs> oh man, how, how was your weekend? Shade felt great. We, we, we've had Reese; he's been dominating on the already the, uh, the green. He's yeah. been doing, doing good stuff, and I'm, I'm proud of you. But Thanks, it's brother. always fortunate to have you here. Tell yeah, me how was your weekend? Appreciate. It. Yeah, trying to uh, trying to dominate on uh, more than just the green, the fairway, and and the tee box all all throughout the golf course, but. No, it's good. I appreciate you guys having me as always. Uh, you know, we just got back from Atlanta, Georgia. We played the Georgia State Invitational uh, as a team, and we ended up finishing seventh. We didn't have a we had a chance to win, man. Uh, after the after the second round, um, and we, we just couldn't couldn't get uh, the pieces to fall our way. But um, it, we ended up seventh. So and really good teams in front of us. So uh, we we had a pretty pretty decent showing. But yeah, I'm just happy to be back with you guys and uh, ready for another good show. I'm happy you're here, man. And I'm going to tell you guys my weekend was good. Uh, not as great as I'd want it to be, obviously. Got to see some very interesting football games. Uh, got to meet uh, some uh, local law enforcement, and that was a fun a fun adventure for those that know about that one. Mm-hmm. Say so he's going 80 and a 35. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll say, right? You said 85. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. Hard to do that in third gear. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I want to make a quick special shout-out to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Venezuela. Congratulations on your happy marriage, and uh, thank you for letting me be a part of that uh, special day last week on Saturday. Uh, it was a great honor to be there. But without further ado, let's jump in, gentlemen, to APSU football. As Austin P had a rough outing in Central Arkansas and Conway, Arkansas, losing 20 to 49 against the Bears. The Govs defense gave up 42 points in the second half, something we have not seen the Governors do. Uh, Mike the Man Delello just had a rough outing. Jamar, I think you got more on this, right? You know, it was a really a tale of two halves. You saw a really tight, low scoring six to seven. Austin P was trailing, and then out of nowhere. Central Arkansas, Central Arkansas kind of just blows up and scores 42 points in the second half. Now, Austin P did score 14, giving him 20. Right. But, I mean, you just look at it still, even in the 49 to 20, half, not, a, yeah, good, not just, a good thing. It's rough. But, you know, it's a good thing, though, because we see an opportunity week. You know, this is a bye week for Austin P. So they get to kind of fix some things, tweak what they need to. And uh, I think that's the thing. But Reese, yeah. you got to tell me. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, Gov's O line gave up four sacks in that game. Uh, you know, obviously averaging one per quarter. That's not really how it worked out uh, in, in the game. But you just you really can't have your quarterback laying on the ground that many no. times. Um, and you know, Delillo went twenty nine for forty four, two hundred and sixty one yards with a uh, interception. So that's uh, not usually what we see out of uh, the man Delillo. But it, it ended up. It is what it is. And no, no uh, passing touchdowns. Yeah. Either. So yeah. That's, no, that's something yeah. that's yeah. kind of rare for Austin. Too. And yeah. he didn't have a rushing. Delillo didn't have a rushing touchdown. The only touchdowns yeah. I believe that came on for the Governors was rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I believe yeah. um, just just an odd time for for Governors football away from away from the fort uh, in Literally Fort Terra Stadium. Uh, not what we expected. You and I had talked about this last week, Jamar. Uh, a team that was one in four, I believe, or one in three. They they had just won their first game last the week before last. We thought the Governors were going to come in and just steamroll them at, based off the win they did against EKU. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely not something we expected. Um, but their next game. As you said, they get a they get a bye week. They will play Murray State, the zero and five racers, uh, for the probably the final time that we'll see a battle of the border. As that is our former OVC conference pl- uh, opponent. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm excited for that too. You talked about the zero and five racers. I mean, imagine Fortera Stadium, just Austin P beating right. down on the racers. I mean, we have to see it because obviously we thought that Austin P would take care of Central Arkansas. And they didn't. See so I don't want to just say it's yeah. going to happen, but it'd be really nice to see it happen. And we'll be there for that call. Uh, our 245 uh, uh, p.m. kickoff time for, for pregame starts in, on uh, WAPX FM, Clarksville's 919. Um, but let's jump in real quick to college football rankings. Reese, I know you're excited about this because I missed oh, yeah. having you last week for this. <laughs> uh, right now, number one, Alabama, 5-0. and oh, I still don't think they should be number one. Uh, even though they beat Arkansas, I get it. I would agree I, with I that. get it. I don't think they should be number one. Number two, Georgia at 5-0. and oh. Ohio State's number three. You got Michigan at number four. Clemson at number five. USC at number six. Oklahoma State at number seven. Tennessee Vols at number eight. The Ole Miss Rebels at 
number nine in Penn State at the t- the tenth spot. Kentucky falls six spots after losing to Ole Miss, who is up five spots and makes their way to the ninth spot. Gentlemen, I, just a lot going on, real quick. Mm-hmm. I, Reese, before I jump into any of these other games I, or anything that's potential, I want to ask you: How was it? Being in Knoxville, I've seen photos from family members that yeah. were there during the checkered, checkered Stadium. I've seen the photos of the waves of fans. How was it being in that stadium and being in that area during that Florida football game? Be- being in the area, um, it-, it was it was kind of like just going back to being a kid. You know, I remember twenty. You know, I've been going to to games pretty much since I was you know six or seven years old so it really did feel like you know we went back to those those days of Philip Fulmer his few last years and um, you know I wasn't born in 1998 but it, it kind of felt Shame. like that vibe again. yeah exactly yeah it was just it kind of felt like that vibe again you know it, I almost want to say Tennessee's back but you know I don't want to say that but I, I got to you know I mean they, they they really are number eight in the country they've beaten two ranked teams both or one of them away from home if they beat LSU and Death Valley at this upcoming week that'll mm-hmm. be two uh, ranked wins away from Neyland Stadium and one in Neyland Stadium so the Vols are looking really good and oh, that man. stadium was electric I want to ask too so obviously this week you'll have LSU to take care of yep y'all know who y'all take on the week after that right Bama third Saturday in October. Tell me what you tell me your expectations for that. I know it, you know, don't yeah. we, they have a LSU to take care of. And sure. I think Alabama, they have Texas A&M to take care yeah, of. Yeah, so exactly. It's not like and either and of y'all that's the thing. I will say Bama, Bama does not do good against Jimbo Fisher. They don't. And Saban has problems with Fisher. And, and now Fisher's in the in with, with A&M. So I, I think A&M could very well walk out of that with a win. I'm not calling the upset. But yeah. I am saying it's a possibility, fans, yeah. for those that, that, that can see me. I am saying it's a possibility. To, to your thing, and I want to I wanna add to this, do you think Tennessee will make it past Bama next week? I mean, not, not ignoring LSU. Let's not ignore LSU. Right. We'll get to that game in a right. second. But just looking ahead, and we'll talk more about it next week, do you really think that you got a chance? I think the I think if it was at Alabama, I think we'd lose by two touchdowns. But since it's in Neyland Stadium, that – it, it's going to be. It's going to come down to, to a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter. I okay. really do think so. That Neyland okay. Stadium gives you at least six points on the spread <laughs> when, when it comes down to yeah. it. Normally, like, you only I get like three. how the fans get included for that. Oh, it does. It literally does. Have they sold tickets oh yeah, for that? Oh, it's, it's sold out. Whole, it's got, it's that's got to be sold out by now for yeah. sure. For sure, got to be a sold out game. Yeah, it is. That that brings me to the Alabama Texas A and M. I think Alabama is going to have a rough night against A and I don't think Alabama deserves to be number one on this list. I get it. They beat uh, I think it's Arkansas or yeah. somebody like that, and Arkansas had a good team but Arkansas also came in limping I yeah. mean they they lost the week before they're just not looking good anymore and in Kentucky also fell to Ole Miss let's get into that too Ole Miss now in ninth uh they play Vanderbilt this week I think Ole Miss is going to destroy Vanderbilt no mm-hmm. offense to my to the Commodores and and my fanship for my for my grandfather I just think that Ole Miss has got a better team Vanderbilt's still too young yeah doesn't have enough to make it off the field I don't I think the UT uh 25 uh, 25th ranked LSU match is going to be a great matchup because they're in LSU mm-hmm. that's it yeah. uh, Kelly's Looks looks like he forgot how to coach. I mean, have you seen anything on TV of him coaching lately? It's bad. It's not good. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not, not good. good. But it, it's going to play into LSU's favor just because right. it's in Death Valley. You right. got to throw everything out and the window when it comes to playing a ranked matchup in Death Valley. And unfortunately for Tennessee, we are now in the part of the season where yeah. everything always looks good. Yep. And yep. as we said earlier about Neyland when we were talking about the fourth quarter with Florida, oh, here comes Tennessee, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm still waiting for the proverbial shoe to drop for the volunteers. Right. You no got, we've got to get over that hump. Yeah, gotta you've get got to. And, and this week's that, that week. It is. This is that yep. week for that. Um, and, and this starts that transition into that. Yep. Um, I, I want to quickly say real fast, uh, Ohio State will play Michigan State. I, uh, I think that's going to be a very good game. Michigan State is not ranked, um, and I think that's always a good game because because Ohio State just struggles against the Spartans. And the last one I want to mention, unranked Auburn will play Georgia this week. I believe that game is in Georgia. Uh, and Auburn, al- although they're unranked, they all the time have played SEC teams really strong, Georgia and Alabama being one of those teams. There could be a very big upset this week uh, with Auburn beating Georgia. So we could very well see number one and number two fall this week. I don't know if Georgia loses to Auburn. Uh, I, I think Georgia's... Dude, man, I said that last year and they lost yeah. to a kickoff. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, just... So, here, here, <laughs> right. so here's what I'll say about that game is that, you know, Georgia's looked bad for two straight weeks. Oh, and yeah. One of those weeks been, being Kent State. You know, you, you, there was a 30-point spread uh, against Kent State there. There was. I mean, that that's terrible. You know, so they're not going to look bad for three straight weeks. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're going to figure it out. they got to get the ball out of Stetson Bennett's hand. He looks very bad right now. And I'll be the, I'll be the one to say it. He looks right. very poor. Um, they've got too many playmakers to be struggling with Kent State um, and, and, and Missouri. So, Oh, I agree. I agree with you. And I think that gives us a good transition now. We can start talking about uh, some, some basketball. 
some NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had uh, many injured players return to the NFL. Uh, or sorry, not NFL, NBA. Sorry, I'm looking at NFL stuff too. My apologies. I can't read apparently today. <laughs> uh, but many NBA players returned to the court to play for their first time in a while. Uh, ben Simmons getting a chance to play a little bit. Uh, granted, it's not a big deal seeing Simmons on the court, but it is kind of when you think about all the all the publicity he had last season. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the la- before I get into it, I will say it's very interesting that while the Lakers are playing preseason, LeBron's more concerned about putting a team in Vegas. So... That's pretty hilarious to me. But, Jamar, I know you got more on this for me. What, uh, what's going on in the NBA? A lot of action is going on in the NBA. I want to first uh, talk about how exciting it's been just to see some of these players out here on the floor. It's all guys, like you said, Kawhi Leonard. Right, like Leonard Sion Fondheim. Zion Williamson. Just, I mean, seeing just seeing John Moran on the floor again, is, is, I mean, he's, he's out here still jumping out of the gym on fast breaks, even though it's preseason. We're seeing John Collins. I don't know if some of y'all saw any clips, but he's, he, he, I mean, he's that's out jumping good. out the gym, playing earlier today. But, right. uh. Really excited to see what possibly might happen with this season, but some drama happening too. Golden State Warriors, you know, I'm a fan, you know, I got to keep up with my guys. And yep, we yep, saw yep. Draymond Green, it is reported that he did punch Jordan Poole in the face during practice. So, uh, or I wouldn't say in the face, I just know he said he punched him. I'm assuming it's, I mean, I'm assuming right. Draymond I mean, Green, I, mean, if you're hearing about I know it, his accuracy shooting isn't that good, but I'm assuming his hands got some kind of accuracy. <laughs> but, um, Make it throw hands, he can, he can run his mouth he, too, he, so he can definitely throw some Michigan, hands. You know, right, 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 right. No, uh, that'll be interesting to see. They're talking about him possibly facing some action as far as maybe being suspended for a little bit. Hopefully that's it doesn't get that serious, but you never know when you see Celtics head coach. I mean, uh, NBA, you see different You're things right. for I different mean, reasons. Not trying to bring that in, but... Right, and you got the Phoenix stuff, too, going on as well, which I, I think Reese had something about that, too. Yeah, I mean, the Suns just lost to, uh, what is it, Adelaide 36ers? Adelaide, they're, they're, Australian 36ers. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, they're from Australia. It was 134 to 121, or 124. So, so the future NBA team beat an NBA team. Sure. Okay. You, you, no, no, I mean, no, no, not, not no. a future NBA team. No, that was a joke. That's what oh, I'm saying. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm saying yeah. the I mean, team that I'll... won against an NBA <laughs> team should be in the NBA, where the NBA <laughs> team should be out. Suns last night, I believe, or two nights ago. Yep. Suns last night, I think, beat the Lakers. Yep, they did. So, by default, wow. the 36ers from Adelaide, Australia, the Lakers. are better than the Lakers. Uh, hey, you know what? I think LeBron might argue about that. He uh, might, might want to little... start a team in Australia. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I mean, he's wanting to start one in Vegas. <laughs> I'll say it. I think there's going to be a lot of teams Australia. better than the Lakers this year. That's just yeah. my you know, personal opinion. I, I, I hope you're right. Very good, I, don't think. I hope you're right. And the reason I hope you're right is just because I'm tired of talking about them. And I'm yep. tired of talking about them because there's so much talent on that team, yep. and they're not doing anything. Uh, if AD doesn't touch the court this year, it's, he, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Even for preseason. He's bulked up. I will say that. Um, so maybe I don't know what is. I haven't really seen his lower bulk up body. as much as you want. I was about to say, say bulk up as much as you want, but then that ankle and that leg needs to, needs some help. He's been skipping some leg days. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe needs some few. He needs some milk. He needs some yeah, <laughs> he does. And I think that gets us a good tra- chance to transition yeah, into. Uh, uh, and, and well, I mean, you got anything else you want to you want to add? I, I'll let I'll let oh, you add man. some more basketball stuff I'll, real quick. I'll Go say ahead. one thing to Adelaide. Go ahead. They they play the Thunder tonight. Uh, and the Thunder are, uh, are minus 15 on, on the spread, so they're a 15-point favorite uh, uh-huh. if, if good you guys, yeah. Yeah, good another so. Thunder favorite, but it yeah. sounds like Adelaide might uh, might have a chance. Yeah, they might go 2-0 and against We're the NBA. I want to ask you all a quick question. Uh, sure. We don't have to go into a link, but there was a poll coming out. If you guys had to start an NBA team right now, Giannis or Luka, who's your, who's your pick? You get one of them. <sighs> I already know my answer. Man, it's tough. so Giannis is my answer, but Luca is great. You can't you yeah. can't not look at Luca. I mean, it, look, look what he's doing in Dallas. I mean, it's it's tough not to give him credit there. But but Giannis is it's a whole different breed. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it man gets recognition and similarities to Michael Jordan. I, I with just size wise alone. I mean, let's yeah. let's just not forget about the way he plays. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely him. I had Giannis as well. I, I was about to say I'll say Giannis. I mean, I didn't even really have to think about mm-hmm. that. It's yeah. it's one of those things that size is. It's it's the rare combination of size, athleticism, right. and the ability to just score the basketball. And someone who know? actually wants to play the game. Right. Yeah. I mean, no offense to anybody else in the league. There are players that want to play the game, mm-hmm. but. Giannis solely makes it about the game. There's not other add-on deals and yeah. stuff that he's added into the game for the Bucks. I think, think Luca's that guy, though. I no, think yeah, Luca's been yeah, that guy, too, Luka's and no offense to him. Like yeah. I said, he's doing great in Dallas, right. and I think he'd be a great player to have. But if I had the option between those two, if that's what's left on my pick board for draft, yeah. I'm going with Giannis all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would, it would be interesting. it's hard not to. Uh, Mavericks have Christian Wood now, but Luca's never really had a great team to work with. No, I mean, you look right. at the people. He's been the only by himself. Been around. He's been around some pretty nice yeah. pieces. So, which has helped he, him with his game. Yeah, I, I agree. mean, I I don't he's know. Got a ring. That's a good Luka, question. Luca's making these passes, oh, and they're man. just not making them. Yeah, Giannis is making these passes, and they are making them. So it definitely makes Giannis look better on the playmaking yeah. side. But still, dominance. I'm picking Giannis still. But right. I know we had a transition to some cool things going on. MLB. I'll go ahead yeah. and talk about it. Postseason yeah. picture. 
postseason. It's looking nice for our, for my locals here, the Braves and Cardinals, both in the postseason looks. I know you we, say we have. I mean, who 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 in Tennessee likes the Orioles? I don't know. I, mean, uh, I know two of them. Uh, right two here. of them in the show <laughs> right here. I mean, two because three. they were that's almost like, a Nashville. Like they were almost a Nashville team. Cool. Yeah. I mean. They're not anymore. By the way, Camden Yards renewed for for at least yeah. uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and when the when the season ended, it did get renewed. Baltimore will stay in Baltimore. They're not coming to Nashville. So now you can take the Rays, Nashville. That's all I say. Um, but getting into baseball and talking about that, the wild card games this year are now th- best of three instead of just a one shot game. So it is a best of three series. Oh, uh, they'll start going on uh, tomorrow. Uh, first game starts at eleven oh seven a.m. It will be McLannan for Tampa Bay mm-hmm. versus Shane Bieber for the Cleveland Guardians. Such a great name. <laughs> um, Cleveland is favored to win that series. Uh, the other side, we've got uh, starting at 107, that's going to be uh, Wheeler versus undecided St. Louis, but we know it's Wainwright. Yeah, it's Everyone who be. knows the Cardinals knows it's Wainwright coming in for the Cardinals this week uh, for at 107. That game will kick off then. I think the Cardinals are going to win that as well, but they are favored going into this matchup too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seattle Mariners versus Toronto Blue Jays. That is going to be Castillo versus uh, Moana, Mo- 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 something. Um, Manoa, I think is how you say that. Yeah, I always want to say Moana because I don't like Toronto at all. And this guy actually had a very big mouth starting off the season and was really, really one of those guys that was chirping in the locker room for for their rotation. So I I expect a really good matchup between Seattle and Toronto. Um, You Darvish versus Max Scheiser for uh, for the Padres versus the Mets. Mets favored for that one as well. That game kicks off at 7.07. It is very interesting to see what's happening. Uh, Before I get back into postseason, I do want to congratulate Aaron Judge. Uh, hitting his 62nd home run of the season, passing uh, Maris as well. Can I ask a question? Sure. Does he have the record? Yeah. He officially has the record. No. We're giving it to Barry no. Bonds. Well, I mean, oh, not a, that record. Can we, no, can yeah. we get into that? We were, I was going to get into that. That was okay, the next okay. thing I was going to get into like, after this. He's like this. fifth on the, on the like, list. Yeah, he's do fifth on the list. He doesn't have any record yet. Yeah. Are you all the type to discredit Barry Bonds? I'm no. sorry, putting the hand no. in the camera. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. I just want but to ask. Barry, Barry Bonds right now, for those that don't know, Bonds holds the overall home run record uh, for a single season. I believe the record is 70, 73. I thought it was seven for some reason. But okay. So and so Judge isn't that far off. Judge can get into postseason. That's fine. The thing is is that right now the conversation is because Judge has done it without PEDs and Bonds did it during the performance enhancing drug era that and the and steroids that it's discrediting Barry Bonds. You don't discredit either one of them because it's something that doesn't happen in baseball. But you do kind of give Judge respect for yeah. what he's done because he did it without performance enhancing drugs. It's, I mm-hmm. think it's spectrum too because some people are saying you know he's playing in a smaller ballpark. It's a little easier to hit home. Oh, is the New Yankee Yankee Stadium. Stadium? New Yankee Stadium is a joke. Uh, that yeah. the, the, the New York, the ballpark in New York is awful. I mean, it's mm-hmm. tiny. It's home run central. That's why the New York Yankees yeah. built it because it's a launching pad. They literally got players that could do nothing but launch the ball. So why not build a stadium it's the same way? That's why they don't like Corada Park is what they dub Camden Yards now yeah. because they can't hit it over the left field wall anymore. And if you saw their last, it was the last game of the series. Aaron Judge hits a just hits a Smack. missile. It's a missile to that. <laughs> and if they would have, if they would have kept the fence, it would have been it would have been home run. run. By Probably what thirty feet or something. Forty five. Pushed it back, <laughs> and uh, he he didn't get it. And that was the yep. one thing I wanted. I did not want Aaron Judge to get it against Baltimore. That's only that's the only I thing I wanted because I was series. I was right there with him. And the thing is, we were the only team that was throwing to him besides Boston. Exactly. Because they I think they ended the season with uh, with they ended the season with the Rangers. Rangers. The yeah, Rangers. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. what it was. Yeah, they they weren't. The game before us, they weren't throwing to judge. Yeah. When they get when they came into Baltimore, I was like, "Oh, we're gonna pitch to him because we're just stupid." <laughs> I mean, not that we're dumb. Have not, some pride. I mean, yeah. I have pride, but I mean, we were, we were already out of the the <laughs> we were out of the playoffs. Yeah, we were yeah, out of the playoffs. There's anyways, no way. So there's we weren't losing um, anything. I, I want to ask real quick, just because we're covering baseball, and I'm gonna throw each game out. Just tell me who you think's walking out of this game. Obviously, the the winner of Tampa Bay and, and Cleveland is gonna be is gonna play against New York. Who's walking out of Tampa Bay and Cleveland? I'll say Tampa Bay just because their game two starter is Tyler Glass now. His rehab start against uh, the Red Sox, seven Ks in three innings and two thirds. So okay. Give me that. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to piggyback off Reese. You piggyback off Reese? I like, I like what you said. All right, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say I think I'd rather Tampa Bay win this, even though I am an, an AL East fan yeah. and I don't like the Rays or, or, the, or the Blue Jays or the Yankees. I think the, the Rays give a better chance for the Yankees to lose because of familiarity. Right. Uh, Cleveland's going to get crushed by New York. So I, I think if you want a better playoff, you want the Rays to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to when it comes to Seattle versus Toronto, I think I'd love to see Seattle walk out of there because they're the they're the underdog story, Cinderella, Cinderella story. They shouldn't be in at all. They shouldn't even be fifth. They should be sixth in the in, yeah. in the wild card. But somehow to, uh, Tampa Bay just drops the ball. I'd love to see the Mariners come out of that, and I, I'm actually going to pick the Mariners to win, yeah. but I do think Toronto walks out of that game. Uh, I was about to say, I'm going to take Toronto there, but can we just acknowledge there's three teams from the AL East in yeah. 
in the playoffs. Right. Like that, that's unheard and all, of, really. All three teams, and, and, and even the teams that didn't make it, except for Boston, had yeah. win, had well, Boston had a winning record. But all teams had a winning yeah. record and had really good uh, good years this year. They did. Um, going over, by the way, the winner of Seattle and Toronto will play Houston. Going over to the to the NL side, Philly versus St. Louis. I'm going with the Cardinals all day, baby. You can't you can't be, bet against Wainwright, Molino, and and Pujols. You can't mm. bet against them. I'm yeah. sorry. I actually hope they win the whole thing. I hope they beat Atlanta, too, because <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think the Braves should repeat after what they did to Freddie Freeman. I'm, I'm going with the Cardinals as well. Yep. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. And uh, last but not least, Darvish uh, and uh, Scheiser, the Padres versus the Mets. I'll, I'll go Mets just because their their starting rotation, uh, pretty much one through three, it's so is good. it's so good. It's so good. You got Scherzer, Degrom, and then Bassett closing that out. And they might throw Degrom actually third game if they right. make it to that. I don't think they they're making it. Bassett. I don't think they're making third game. I think they win the first two. I yeah. think they're sweeping San Diego. I know the Padres played the Nets really good, but I think they're sweeping the Padres. Yeah. The Padres are missing too many pieces and and um. are banged up, and it's just it's not going to work. And plus, uh, Buck Walter, the the manager for uh, for the Mets. In the playoffs, he's uh, we saw him in 2017 yeah, for the phenomenal. Orioles. This guy, this guy doesn't stop yeah. trying to win, and and I, I really think for the Mets, it's more about uh, it's more about that and less about uh, less about what my team is at that point. And I I don't think he cares about his veteran presence. He's going to put who, who needs to be in there to win. I, yeah, I exactly. agree too with the Mets. And from looking at it, I really do believe that everyone who's getting a bye week is probably going to win their game. With, I think the Braves yeah. Cardinals could be close, but I, I think the Dodgers beat whoever that is. I think the Astros beat whoever it is, and I think the Yankees do it too. I agree with you. I agree with you there. Um, the only the only tidbit is depending on who beats who who wins the the Tampa Bay Cleveland game because if, if Tampa Bay makes it to New York, yeah, I think that's a better series than we'd like to, to admit because I mean Tampa Bay hasn't had a great team all year. They've been kind of quiet, um, and they've had the injuries to Glass now mm-hmm. and a couple other people as yeah. well. But the thing is, like I said, it comes down to familiarity, and and New York has not handled teams they've played well consecutively yeah. like they they struggled against the Orioles they struggled against Toronto they struggled against Tampa Bay all year even the Red Sox who had a f- an yeah, awful they were, they year were, they were a terrible year yeah, they were horrible. Uh, for for Red Sox for Red Sox fans mm-hmm. to them that is a terrible year even though for us that's a good year yeah literally um <laughs> and so i mean you just you just can't you just can't look at it without without saying that familiarity is going to hurt them but i do think that if Cleveland makes it yeah, no, the Yankees are going to make it to the ALCS. And actually, I do think that the, my World Series picks right now, if I would like them to be, I'd like them to be Seattle and St. Louis. Mm. But I do think it's probably going to be New York and Atlanta. Um, I, don't think, I don't think the Dodgers are making it. I think, I think the Dodgers are going to fail because Atlanta got red hot at the last part of yeah, that season. The Mets led for 172 days in first place for that division. Atlanta got it in the last two weeks of baseball. Yeah. They led for eight days. Atlanta led for eight days in that, in that division. Ridiculous. I, That's I, ridiculous, um, sir. That shouldn't be heard of. Yeah, you, you might want the Braves to win, but my FanDuel says that the Dodgers. Are gonna I mean, I'll, I'll agree with your FanDuel. I'd rather the Dodgers beat the Braves. Oh, I don't want the Braves I, I, going. I held this parlay the whole time. <laughs> this man held a parlay I had, I had, the entire year. I had the Warriors year. winning the finals, this and guy. I had the Dodgers winning the World Series, and it's kept up this whole time. I just needed to hit. Well, so maybe maybe we'll talk about what's we're going to we're going to switch over to NFL coverage now. NFL standings. I'm just going to give the teams that are currently tied and or winning their division right now. There's three way tie for AFC North with Cleveland, Baltimore, and Cincinnati. Boo. Uh, AFC South. Jacksonville's tied with Tennessee, two and two. Miami leads three and one. Oh no, sorry, Miami's tied with Buffalo at three and one because Buffalo won over the weekend. Kansas City's three and one, leading solely for the AFC West. In the NFC North, you've got Minnesota tied with Green Bay, Tampa Bay tied with Atlanta uh, for the NFC South. Philadelphia is the only undefeated team in football right now at four and zero, oh, leading the NFC East and the NFC West. You have a tie, a three way tie, or no, four way tie between all those teams: the Rams, the Niners, the Seahawks, and the Cardinals. Um, guys, anything shocking to you that, that out of these standings to you that just just seems weird? Uh, any teams that you uh, you want to talk about real quick? Yeah, I mean the okay. AFC South just the they, they they they're just not good. Just look awful. Yeah, they're terrible. I mean, they're, so they're the AFC South good. turned into the NFC East. I was just pretty much. Say that. Yeah, the yeah. NFC yeah. East. Yeah. But so let's let's talk about the NFC least. Uh, I mean, uh, other than your Washington Commanders yeah, who are doing a one and three, I mean, I, I know you don't want to talk about it, but but let's look at the Dallas Cowboys. Put some respect on the, let's let's look at the Dallas the Cow- thing, Dallas yeah. Cowboys real quick. Dallas lost their quarterback what week one? Yeah, Dak Prescott was, goes yeah. down it's with a broken, broken hand. Broken yep. hand. But Cooper Rush four zero. Four and zero. Four and zero. Dak, I hate to break it to you, man. Beside your hand, um, <laughs> can you uh, can you take some more time Ooh. off? Because because I know it was a bad joke, but but the Cowboys, them Yeehaw Cowboys, are super happy about Crush right now. Yeah. And no offense to Dak Prescott, but they're looking like a very similar situation that happened to Tony Romo is yeah. happening to Dak now. And I, I hate it for Dak, 
but I love it for Dallas because Dallas is winning games. And Jerry Jones even came out and said on the the radio station or whatever he does. Yeah, I does. hate how he does right, that, right. but, but he still does. <laughs> and he said that Cooper Rush has the build, the the intelligence, and, and that's a man trying to build his quarterback. Up right sure, there, I but I mean, you know, it's it's just Jerry Jones. He's just talking. Right. You know how that is. And that brings us into this week's uh, pickums. Yeah. All right, I want to bring us into these pickums real quick because I want to make sure we get a chance to talk about these games real fast. Thursday night, it's the Colts versus the Broncos. The Broncos are favored by three points. Matt Ryan is fourth in passing yards with the pass yard list right now, and the Broncos have, are banged up but are getting better on offense somehow, even though they're still banged up. Guys, I've got, uh, I want to say real quick, uh, Trey, Jay, uh, and Wicks, and even Joanne all, all, all have the Broncos winning that game. Uh, I've also got Denver winning that game. Gentlemen, what do you have? Denver or, or the Colts coming in for, for this Thursday night football match? Denver. It's in Denver, which mm-hmm. is a big right. factor. And it, they're three-point favorites. I think they'll win by at least a touchdown. I think so, too. What about you? Broncos country. Let's ride. <laughs> I hate, I hate that you did that. Let's kick. <laughs> Let's kick. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is it? All year he's supposedly been practicing that too in the mirror. That's great, right? Broncos country. I know, Broncos country. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Mile High Stadium. That's a tough place to play. It, it, Top it, five it toughest is, place to play. It is. And, and, and I, I do think the Colts are going to come in and actually make a game. Because right yeah. now, uh, owner Jim Ursay, who, who, if everybody knows, is always the one that took him from Baltimore overnight uh, and put him in Indianapolis. Uh, that owner has said GM, coach, and quarterback are all on the chopping block right now. Mm-hmm. So we could very well see. Ballard gone, Reich gone, and Ryan all gone from the Colts. Uh, going into Sunday night football, we do have the Bengals versus the Ravens. This is a three-point favorite for the Baltimore Ravens. It's the uh, Bengals get their second win and are looking better, but their O-line might not hold up. Jackson is 18-2 and right now in primetime games, but they have yet to win at home this season. They have an eight-game losing streak right now, which is the longest in uh, franchise history. Uh, the last time that happened in losing streaks, John Harbaugh took over as head coach from the coach that had that losing streak, which was, I think, Bill Billick, I believe, if my memory serves correctly. Uh, my brain is a little off today for that, though. Um, I've got Baltimore obviously coming in there. There's a lot of bad blood coming in. This is going to be a really rough game. It's going to be a lot of hard hits and a lot of people being hurt. I think Baltimore's walking out of this game at least three, uh, probably seven points up, wow. uh, to be honest. I think it's Bold. a three-point game, but I think it's a seven-point ending. I think Lamar Jackson. I mean, it's really put some uh, respect you know on the name, yeah, right? I'm gonna. We talked about Fanduel. I like bringing it in. At Reese, I was saying, I know you can't talk about it being a student athlete, but I think Bronx, uh, Baltimore definitely wins his first half. It's just all about you know holding that. <laughs> Get lead. out of here. So I mean, oh, I definitely, yeah. I think, right. I think Baltimore right, can come out strong in this first half, especially being at home. It's just about maintaining that. But we know the Bengals are known to kind of be able to come back. We know Joe Shiesty, aka Joe Burrow, right. he can do some things. Right. But I still have Baltimore winning. Uh, you know, I said it last year, or arguably around this time, I'm not betting against Joe Burrow. I don't care. Give me the Bengals. You, you can't help. bet against that guy. <laughs> Eight touchdowns on the season, tied uh-huh. sixth in the NFL, um, mm-hmm. thousand yards passing already. He's got too many playmakers on the outside, too. They're not playing but as well as they need to. He can't stay upright. You're, you're right, yes. They, they spent all this money on the offensive line. They bragged the, the, the all, all offseason. They brag about this offensive line. He can't stay upright. But he couldn't stay upright last year. They made it to the Super Bowl. You, you're right. You're right. I hate, I hate when you're right. I mean, I could see T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Have That's what I'm saying. Jamar's I mean, they're, they're going to have some good, they're gonna have some good games. I, I will say, best thing for Baltimore is healthy secondary. That's the best thing for Baltimore right now is they have a healthy secondary. The pass rush is the question mark for Baltimore right now. I do agree with you. I think it's holding the second half, but it's also will the offense score in the second half? Because I don't know what's happening, but all of a sudden in second half football, Greg Roman forgets how to call football games. And I don't know. There's like no adjustments being made in the second half for anybody. Um, but let's keep going to Monday Night Football. It's going to be the Raiders versus the Chiefs. Kansas City is the only seven-point favorite this week by any NFL team. I think Kansas City is the seven-point favorite. Yeah. I think Kansas City could almost win by 14 at this point because, because Derek Carr and, and Josh McDaniels' Raiders look awful. Yeah. They don't look good. Yeah, I don't, no. I don't understand why it's only seven-point favorite. Because, I think because it's Chiefs- NFL. Yeah, I guess they don't mean, usually go more than seven. Yeah. You might get ten if it's a really lopsided game, but even the Lions it's back when the Lions man. were zero and sixteen yeah. Yeah. weren't getting more than ten points. Best this feels like a, a ten point favor, but I mean Raiders, we Should haven't be. seen that great game from them yet. So well, they, they won they one game. Do for it. I mean, great game. Oh no, I agree with you. But they've won it's one. You but probably will. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. will. Other than that, guys, I want to thank you each week coming out here and taking your time to put, to be here. Thank you, Steve Sawyer, Joanne Wicks, uh, Jay, Trey, D- David Ellison, Doc V for letting us use the studios here in Austin. P. It's been a wonderful time here for crunch time we'll see you next week